Everyone always asks me how my journey with the Quran started. And the answer to that is with the miraculous story of how my mother converted to Islam. Because, you know, when I look back at my childhood, sure the Quran was part of everyday life in the sense that my parents, for example, would recite sort of protections with us on the walks to school or tucking us in bed at night. Sure, I'd hear my dad, you know, reciting Surah Kaf from the living room every Friday and we would sing along to nasheeds that glorified the Quran on our car rides, etc. But one early memory that really stands out as having a very profound impact on my personal journey with the Quran was the miraculous personal story that my mom told me growing up about her introduction to the Quran and how it resulted in her converting to Islam. And that's the story I want to share with you today. You know, my mom's story is one of a very bizarre but miraculous set of three consecutive dreams that she had over three nights when she was just turning 13 years old. This is before my mom knew anything about Islam and Muslims because my mother is a Scottish weaver who grew up in a very small town of Perth in eastern Scotland. And although she identified as a Catholic, she didn't really grow up with any religious upbringing. Despite that, she told me that one day when she was on the cusp of entering puberty, she chose to speak to God. She had been raised with four brothers and she said if she would often feel lonely as the only daughter. And one day when she was sitting alone at the window of her mother's bedroom, looking out at the beautiful clear blue sky, she noticed a single cloud all alone in the vast sky and she felt a connection to it. You know, because she herself felt very alone in the world. But she noticed how, despite the cloud being so isolated, it looked so calm and peaceful. And its isolated presence actually made it more beautiful and powerful in the sky and significant. So her mind then shifted from one of negativity to hope. And then with a desperate sincerity, and she said an almost challenging tone, she then said out loud to God, Why am I here? What is my purpose in life? If you show me God, I'll do it. And shortly after that incident, she had the first of three consecutive dreams that would later come to completely transform her life forever. So on the first night, she dreamt that she was standing in this vast space of total blackness. There was nothing, no stars, no light, no people, no sound. There was no life. And she said she was utterly terrified. And after standing there for a period of time, completely desperate to escape that darkness, she turned around and saw behind her some light in the distance, and she began moving towards it with speed. And as she came into the light, she was relieved to find these beautiful rivers and greenery around her, with people happily walking around and interacting with one another. And she said all of a sudden she felt an intense feeling, a kind of a calling, an instruction to find the key. So she began approaching different people around her in the dream where she attempted to see whether anyone had this key that she needed. But one by one, they all shook their heads or just replied in the negative. But after some time of searching, she said she came across her eldest brother, Philip, who was standing by a river. And without a single word, he pulled out this key from behind him and handed it to her. And my mom told me that that's when she woke up from her dream. Yes, a strange dream, she thought, but she didn't think anything of it. However, the following night when she fell asleep again, extraordinarily her dream continued right where it had ended the previous night. So in this second dream, with this key now in her hand, my mother told me that she looked at this river that her brother had been standing next to in the, the dream the night before, and she saw people trying to cross this river. Some people were swimming across with ease, some people were really struggling but made it to the other side, while other people unfortunately drowned in their attempt. With the key in her hand, she then attempted that crossing herself, and with a lot of effort, she said she made it to the other side. But when she did so, she woke up from her dream again. And although it seemed quite phenomenal to have these two consecutive dreams, quite strange, she just thought it was a coincidence. But then, subhanAllah, for the third consecutive night in a row, you guessed it, her dream continued right where it had ended the previous night. So in this third dream now, having crossed this river with this key in her hand, my mother told me that she stood at the start of a really long path ahead of her, where in the distance she could see some type of religious building. And she said that as she journeyed, time felt really, really slow as she walked on that path. But she eventually reached the building, she opened the doors and she entered. 
And she said inside the room was all mystified with fog, but she could see at the end of the aisle before her that there was this feathered pen and there was a scroll. And she instinctively knew that she was meant to inscribe her name on it. But as she went to write her name, she said she woke up from her dream, but this time to realize that she had now physically entered into womanhood, that she had started her menses for the first time. Now, despite the remarkable nature of her dream and the timing at which she had them entering into puberty, it was actually something that my mother said she naturally forgot about over the next six years of her life until one a single event occurred which caused the memory of all of this to come flooding back to her. To summarize this part of my mom's story, my mother's first exposure to Islam was when she engaged with Muslims at the age of 19 years old. One day a hijabi sister came into the hairdressing shop where my mom used to work and asked if there was any hairdressers available to come and visit her in her home and to cut the hair of a small group of Muslim women who were temporarily living there while their husbands worked in that city. And it was my mum who agreed to it. And when my mum visited these sisters, she was so taken back. She said not only by the hidden beauty that they chose to cover with their hijabs, but by the beautiful characters and really generous behaviour and mannerisms too. And after a number of heart-touching encounters with these women, my mother was then one, gift, one day gifted with some Islamic literature from them. And it included a biography of the Prophet Sallallahu and her first copy of the Quran as well. And miraculously, on the spine of the copy of this Quran, there was an image of a key. But not just any key. That's right, it was that exact beautifully distinct key that she held in her hand in her dream that she had six years prior to this after having asked God to show her her purpose in life. That dream that had lasted three consecutive nights that ended with her physically entering into a stage which we Muslims know and are taught is a, is a time when we a person is actually accountable for their actions, subhanAllah, right? And that miraculous event led my mom to then choosing to fulfill that promise that she made sitting at her mother's bedroom window those many years ago by accepting Islam and becoming a Muslim. And you know, there were many other profound, amazing parallels between my mom's dream and her entry into Islam. Like, for example, her brother Philip, who, if you remember in the dream, gave her the key, right? He was actually the person who deterred any retaliation she could have otherwise faced from her families and friends at the time, um, you know, because he was the one who calmed everyone down, their fears, and told them that, um, you know, that my mom was probably just going through a phase and encouraged everyone just to let her be, subhanAllah. But without going off on any tangents here, it's important to highlight the significant way in which the Quran was presented to me by my mother from a very young age. To me, the Qur'an was presented really as a miracle. To me, the Qur'an really was the answer. To me, the Qur'an really was a purposeful guide. But even as a child, subhanAllah, I could have never anticipated just how much this gift would wow me with its wonders, just how many answers it would provide me to every single question I had in my life, and just how far it would guide me during every single struggle and endeavor that I would ever have, which has ultimately shaped the very person I am today, alhamdulillah. But my experience with the miraculous Quran didn't end there. At the age of 15, I actually had my own miraculous experience with the Quran. But I think that's a story for another day, inshallah.